The iPhone 6S Plus, introduced by Apple in September of 2015, is often regarded as a better version of the iPhone 6 Plus. However, as history showed, it proved to be much more than that, being an extremely reliable iPhone that lasted for years and years and years, and ultimately introduced the longevity that iPhones nowadays have. Welcome to another Apple Demo video, and today we're going to be taking a look at a more recent but extremely early prototype. As a matter of fact, in terms of newer devices, this prototype is one of the earliest I've ever shown on my channel. Today, we're going to take a look at a prototype iPhone 6s Plus. Now as you've probably already noticed, this iPhone 6s Plus has a number of hardware differences from production ones. If we take a look at the back, we can immediately notice that there's a data matrix, along with having the serial number and the configuration of this iPhone 6s Plus prototype. And if we decode the serial number, we can see that it was made in late May of 2015, having been made almost four months before the official release of the iPhone 6s and 6s Plus. Additionally, if we take a look at the back, we can see that there's a lot of information X'd out, such as the model number, the FCC ID, and the IC number. And perhaps one of the most weird things of all, and some of you may have noticed, there actually isn't even the S branding. Similar to the iPhone SE prototype that I took a look at, this was most likely to camouflage it and not openly advertise that it's a newer model of iPhone. But the fact that this is an iPhone 6s Plus, but it looks more like an iPhone 6, is rather funny. Now flipping the iPhone over, we can see that there's text engraved at the bottom left. Again, this is just the configuration of this iPhone 6s prototype, but I love seeing this engraved text on the front because it really makes it look a lot more cool. Now, getting to the software of this iPhone 6s Plus prototype, as we can see, it doesn't run conventional iOS. When we click the power button, it doesn't even show the Apple logo, it shows a Gear logo. This is because this prototype runs non-UI, also known as Switchboard, which essentially is a heavily modified version of iOS that's designed for a factory setting. But before we get into it, let's take a look at the boot up process. Upon using a serial connection to see the boot up process, we can see a few pieces of information that are quite interesting. First of all, we can see that it says iBoot for N66, with N66 being the internal code name for the iPhone 6s Plus. If we look at the build tag, we can see that this iPhone runs iBoot-2748.0.0.1.9, being a build of iBoot made between iOS 8.4.1 and iOS 9.0 Beta 1. Which of course makes sense that it would be between these two versions, considering it is a prototype build of iOS 9.0. Which of course then leads into the build style, or the type of iBoot being installed, being a developmental version. And now getting into the hardware, we can see that it says the CPFM, or essentially, the security fusing of the SOC slash the CPU, is 00, zero which essentially means that it's development fused, allowing for developmental features such as JTAG. Now, in terms of the stage of prototype that this iPhone 6S is, this iPhone is an EVT, or Engineering Validation Testing, prototype. Essentially being one of the very first stages in which the iPhone 6s Plus would have been going through in the prototyping process. And the fact that such an early prototype can exist of this model is just so amazing. But now finally, here's a demo of non-UI in action.
In a way, this prototype holds a special place in my heart because the iPhone 6s was actually one of my favorite models of iPhones. And in a sort of sad way, it kind of represents the point in which Apple kind of stopped innovating as much as they used to. With newer iPhone models kind of just being good upgrades nonetheless, but just more incremental. And it almost kind of felt like the iOS 9 and iOS 8 era was just different from how iOS versions are now. And on top of all of that, when I got my iPhone 6s, that was kind of the time that I started getting interested in collecting prototypes. And I used to remember that hours and hours and hours I would spend on eBay just scrolling through listings, trying to find prototypes, and most of the time failing, but occasionally when I did find one, especially considering my collection wasn't as large at the time, it was amazing. And all of that happened on my old iPhone 6s. So in a way, owning a prototype version of the phone that I used to get prototypes and find them and buy them on is almost a bit poetic for me, which is especially why I like this prototype. And needless to say, this prototype will be staying in my collection for many years to come. Thank you for watching my video, and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please consider leaving a like and even consider subscribing as it really helps motivate me to create more content just like this. And currently I do have quite the backlog of prototypes, so I can assure you there will be many more videos to come. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one.